George Soros, thank you for being here. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Uh, the theme in Davos this year is the new reality, and you have said that the efficient market hypothesis has failed, and you're saying economists have to find a new way of understanding the financial markets in this new reality. I explain what that new way is. Well, uh, the fact that, that uh, markets are not necessarily tending towards equilibrium, mm -hmm. that they're just as easily producing bubbles as, uh, as equilibrium is what you have to come to terms with. And, and uh, that requires a whole new approach uh, because uh, the theory has been uh, effectively proven to be misleading. Mm. So uh, there's this new institute for, institute for New Economic Thinking, mm -hmm. which has taken off and uh, tremendous interest in the, prof the profession, uh, some new research grants, um, and uh, there's a new one, uh, one institute set up now at the London School of Economics right. in which, uh, and the Central European University, in which I will actually be a protagonist because I have a theory which I proposed uh, uh, nearly 20 years ago, uh, in fact more than that, uh, uh, that has now proven to be maybe more relevant, but it needs to be developed. So uh, I'll be working on it. And, and explain the theory for us. Uh, obviously, that the old system in your mind of, of thinking of, of, of economists uh, I isn't the correct one in this new reality. Well, it's, it, you see, the, the, the uh, economics uh, try to imitate natural science, mm -hmm. but there's a fundamental difference that in economic and, and uh, human uh, um, uh, events uh, are thinking participants and the, the participants understanding of the situation in which they participate is inherently imperfect. Mm. Uh, I can explain to you why but it's not too complicated, mm -hmm. too, no need to go there. At any rate, so you've got imperfect knowledge instead of uh, uh, what is assumed to be a perfect understanding of uh, the situation and what the best policies are. And that applies mm -hmm. both to market participants mm -hmm. and to regulators. Uh, so you had, uh, um, say, uh, so, uh, free markets in the 19th century, right. uh, and they collapsed uh, because of imperfect understanding. So you turn to the state and you had uh, socialism and, uh, reg uh, you know, depending on the state to regulate sure. everything. But then uh, their understanding is imperfect too. Uh, so now you have to come to terms with living in a world where both the markets are imperfect and the regulators. Th this new reality is a, a, a bit terrifying in the sense that human imperfection can have severe impacts. What, what is the one outstanding risk that you see uh, yeah. to this global recovery? What, what unnerves you? Well, well uh, the main uh, problem is that the regular, uh, you know, you have a, a, a global markets, but you don't have global regulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, you need, obviously, unregulated markets break down. We have seen it. So you need regulation, but then how do you get the different uh, 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 governments with different national interests uh, to work together? But it hasn't been solved. We have Basel III and we have Dodd-Frank in the U.S. Right, that's, for the, that's right. So you've got different standards mm -hmm. and, and different interests. And particularly, uh, you've got uh, uh, differences between China and, and the United States mm -hmm. and Europe, three major players and three very different uh, approaches. But you've said uh, that inflation in China is actually helping fuel the recovery or the recovery of the equity market, at least in the United States. Right. Uh, well, you see, uh, uh, we were pres pressing the Chinese to revalue mm -hmm. the renminbi, uh, um, which they refused to do. However, you now have wage price inflation, right. which is basically having the same effect of, of increasing the cost of imports. 
So you now have a little bit of imported inflation in America, which is actually very healthy for the American economy. Because, because without it, the burden of debt was getting heavier and heavier. Sure. And you, ha you needed quantitative easing uh, because with prices not rising, you couldn't stimulate the economy through monetary policy. Now, uh, now that you have inflation um, uh, and you still have quantitative easing, mm -hmm. you actually have now negative real interest rates, which is very stimulative to, for, the, for the stock market. For the United States economy outside of the stock market, uh, the, the jobs crisis in the United States, um, back in, I believe it was October, you, you said the United States really needs more stimulus. Then we had QE2. Is that enough? Uh, um, uh, you, pro you actually need uh, some, some fiscal stimulus because you still have a lot of unemployment. So we need and more. To have, you, you actually you don't want to live with, with, uh, with unemployment where resources are unemployed. It's a real waste because you then have to pay unemployment benefits sure. instead of put, putting people to work in something that actually is productive. So another government uh, stimulus is yes, needed? Yes, but, but it's not possible. Politically. Politically, politically it's not possible. Uh, because and of the, the hype over the deficit. Right, but, but uh, uh, quantitative easing will probably not be necessary uh, after the current uh, round mm -hmm. is up, up. And then uh, uh, interest rates are liable to rise and uh, choke off the recovery. So right now you are in a sweet, sweet spot in the American economy. In a sweet spot? Yeah, yeah. This is about as good as it can get, uh, given the the With ten, rate. almost ten percent unemployment. Well, that's uh, that's why I think you would still need uh, further stimulus, uh, but th that is ruled out. Uh, and in the next uh, uh, year or so, mm -hmm. you'll have tremendous pressure on the states because uh, there'll be a resistance to any increase in uh, taxation. Sure. And therefore, you have to reduce uh, expenditures and renegotiate with the unions. Uh, and, and that is g going to add uh, to the unemployment. Do you think, as a result of that, we will see a bond market crisis in the United States? I uh, is that an overblown concern? Uh, that, I think, is an overblown uh, concern. Uh, but you're going to have... Uh, uh, higher prices, yeah. I mean high, uh, high, higher yields on bonds. Mm. Turning to Europe, you ha you've said that the recovery in Europe is going to be twofold, with Germany driving ahead and the southern tier falling deeper mm. into a recession. Yeah, the, and, and that is now the result of the Euro uh, uh, problem. Right. Uh, the Euro was supposed to bring about convergence, and it had the opposite effect of creating divergence. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Euro crisis is about to be resolved. So the Euro uh, will survive? The, there's a commitment to make the Euro survive. It's now recognized the Euro is here to stay. However, the current uh, uh, form of uh, uh, supplying uh, additional uh, uh, funds uh, for rescuing countries <coughs> will result in a two-tier Europe. With uh, a bailout fast, for the southern uh, tier? A, a, fa a fast lane and a, so, a, a slow <laughs> lane. Sure. And the, the creditors are going to push ahead and the debtors are going to sink. Mm. And that has in, uh, very serious political implications in the long term. So I've been advocating that since you can see this problem now, mm -hmm. why not actually uh, deal with it? And that would require two things. Uh, to m make the rescue package available to inject capital into the, uh, um, uh, into the banks uh -huh. if 
they lose a lot of money because the other measure that you need is to renegotiate the debt, uh, extend the maturity, reduce the coupon, uh, and then the value of those uh, of the debt would f fall, and the, some banks might get into difficulty. Right now, the authorities are determined not to renegotiate the existing debt, but only the new debt that will be issued after 2013. And I don't think that the markets are going to give them the leisure uh, to, to wait for that. <laughs> and I think Ireland is going to, uh, to press the issue. Ireland. Be the, the, because the Irish uh, basically got a, ra a, 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 a raw deal that they had to take, accept the responsibility of the debt that came from the banks losing a lot of money. And, and uh, clearly, the bondholders of the debt of the banks uh, ought to take a cut. Uh, and I think the Irish uh, are going to elect a different government that will, is pledged to do this, uh, bring, it, bring this about. Uh, finally, I know we're running out of time, yeah. but you, you made headlines here in Davos saying that the UK's austerity program will prove unsustainable, that it could push mm. the UK economy back into recession. Um, mm. Some of those headlines, you argue, have been sort of misconstrued. Can you explain what you meant by that? Well, well uh, I, I honestly don't, uh, don't understand how anybody can expect to be able to reduce, uh, cut uh, government expenses as severely as they are currently eighty-one billion pounds. Yeah, uh, at a time when the the, the private demand is is uh, un under pressure as mm -hmm. well, uh, without causing a recession. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm making a purely theoretical point that this is not possible. What's the solution? What, what should David Cameron and his team do? Well, I think uh, he uh, he will have to modify uh, the uh, the plan as he goes uh, as as the results come in. George Soros, thank you. Pleasure. Thanks so much. I appreciate. Mm -hmm. it.